I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, You shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, You fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Settle the matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way or your adversary may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. Sometimes doing religious duty is not what God wants us to do, no matter how holy the action is. Our God is not an egocentric God who wants everything for Himself. He is a God who wants His children to live peacefully with one another. Jesus said that we need to be reconciled with our brothers and sisters. The implication of this reconciliation is not as simple as just paying your financial debts, though it may certainly involve that. I believe Jesus' emphatic statement here reveals the utmost importance of loving one another. Jesus sta stated that the most important commandment is to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. These two commandments are equally important and one cannot be practiced without neglecting the other. Moreover, St. John wrote, If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother or sister, he or she is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother or sister whom he or she has seen cannot love God whom he or she has not seen. Oftentimes, this reconciliation is an inner work of heart. How do you hold your neighbor in your heart? Are you holding grudges towards someone? Is there a word of hatred in your heart that you hold against someone? Is there someone that you have not forgiven? Or do you owe someone do you owe someone something that is so important for that person? Do you owe someone a sincere word of apology? Friends, as you can see, the work of reconciliation is not an easy work. Jesus came to offer God's reconciliation to us. And this reconciliation costs Him His whole life. Yet, He did not hold any grudges to those who hurt Him or denied him or betrayed him. He forgave them. He loved them unconditionally. So we are called to love others as Jesus did too. Love one another as I have loved you. <laughs>